Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we found what the inverse hyperbolic sine of x was equal to. In terms of the exponential functions, we were able to reduce that to something that we can actually calculate by plugging in values. It happened to be equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of, of 1 plus x squared. Now, once we find what the inverse hyperbolic functions are for all of them, we can now see on the board here that there's a number of integrals that we're actually able to integrate. For example, the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1 is equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine. And this, the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1 is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine. So you can see that these are integrals that otherwise would be very difficult to execute, but now we know the solution to those, and now once we know what the, hyper, the inverse hyperbolic cosine or the inverse hyperbolic sine is equal to, like we showed you on the previous video for the inverse hyperbolic sine, those become then fairly easy to integrate. Also notice that we have an integral for 1 over 1 minus x squared that is equal to the inverse hyperbolic tangent, provided that x, the absolute value of x is smaller than 1, and for the absolute value of x being larger than 1, the very same integral turns into the inverse hyperbolic cotangent. And then notice we have also integrals for negative 1 over the uh, negative 1 over x times the square root of 1 minus x squared, that becomes the inverse hyperbolic secant, and 1 over x times the square root of x, 1 plus x squared becomes the inverse hyperbolic cosecant. Notice that the restriction here that x cannot be 0 because if you make this equal to 0 of course then you don't have a defined integral and here we have to have an x being between 0 and 1 so again it can also not be 0 but it cannot be 1 or greater because then if it's equal to 1 of course we have an undefined here and you can see that Again, we have some very nice ways of finding the integrals of integrals that otherwise would be very difficult to determine. So they're very useful for these particular instances. Once we learn how to find the inverse hyperbolic functions, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, we'll then show you how to use them to find these integrals. And that's how it's done.